Population 48,000 and growing is situated on the Holland River in the center of York Region. It is the fastest growing town in the region and one of the fastest growing towns in Canada. In the 1960s, new subdivisions such as Quaker Hills and Bayview Hills were built. Then came annexation of the East Gwillenbury subdivisions north of Davis Drive. In the 1980s, newer subdivisions such as Savage Road, Leslie Valley, Stonehaven, and College Manor were built. The 1990s has continued to see new development with the high-tech smart homes in the Rondo development, the first of its kind in Canada to be hooked up to the information highway. The Young Street Corridor has new shopping plazas, restaurants, fast food outlets. The Regional Courthouse and Land Registry Office is located here. Just up the street sits the new Regional Headquarters Building, seat of the York Regional Government. This section of Young Street between Mulock and Davis Drive has been designated in the official plan as the new center of New Market. But there is another New Market, an older New Market, with heritage homes, schools, churches, and shops. In the heart of the town on the banks of the Holland River sits the designated heritage area of Old New Market. Here among the stately oak and maple tree-lined streets, you can see homes 100 years old or more built by the early settlers and lovingly restored and cared for by their new owners, who proudly display their heritage plaques. You can stroll through these quiet streets and be transported back in time to a time when people lived and worked and shopped within walking distance of their home. Some still do. The old Main Street is here. It's beginning a revival with new stores, art galleries, and specialty shops. The King George Hotel, where the town fathers gathered to greet the Prince and Princess of Wales in 1860, is still here. And it was here in 1885, in front of the hotel, that volunteers from Newmarket formed up on their way to the Northwest Rebellion. And this was repeated again during the Boer War. The Farmer's Market has returned to the old town. And as you stroll down the old Main Street, walk over to Ferry Lake which began its life in 1801 as a mill pond for Joseph Hill's grist mill, and later supplied hydroelectric power to the town. The Kane Woodware factory is gone now, but the office specialty building is still there and in use as home to the Elman Campbell Museum. From the bottom of Old Main Street, you can almost make out the crooked portage trail used by early natives and traders before it became Main Street. The old town hall, which was opened on July the 1st, 1883, is still standing, in spite of the fact that in the 1980s, one of the town councillors suggested the building be blown up to make way for a parking lot. It also served as the courthouse right up until the present building was built. The old jail cells are still there in the basement. The upstairs concert stage is one of the oldest and last examples of a raked stage still in use in Ontario. It is currently home to the New Market Stage Company and the Children's Theatre. Where is Old New Market, and how do you get there? Simply turn south from Davis Drive on Main Street, or turn north on Main Street from Eagle Street, and you're there. Or you can take one of the town buses and leave your car at home. Visit Old New Market. Bring your family. Shop on the specialty stores on Main Street. Stroll through the quiet streets. View the heritage homes and go back to another time, a quieter time, a slower paced time, when people had the time to think and reflect on their lives and the life of the town. It's your heritage, revisit it. Welcome and uh, good evening and welcome again to Community Report. Well, we're back. Tonight we're coming to you from, on location from the old town hall, which you just saw in that clip, uh, which was built in 1883 in downtown Newmarket, or as some people call it, Old Newmarket. And uh, this time uh, we have another panel again to talk about uh, the Old Town. Uh, last December, in 1995, we had uh, Wayne and Terry and uh, Pam McDonald on to, as a panel to talk about what it's like in the, uh, the Old Main Street. So it was such a popular show we decided to do it again, only this time we're going to feature the Main Street area from the top of the uh, hill where the Baptist Church sits looking north, going all the way to Davis Drive. And with us tonight, we have a, a panel. There's uh, Terry Carter, our local historian, on my left. And uh, next to uh, Terry, we have Councillor of the Town of Newmarket, uh, Diane Springsteen. 
and who has a business downtown. And next to uh, Diane, uh, we have uh, Wayne uh, Morgan from the uh, Local Architectural Conser Conservation Advisory Council. And uh, Wayne, of course, if you remember from our last show, uh, lives in the old century home, the Simpson House, in, in downtown Newmarket. So I'd like to welcome you all to uh, Community Report, and thanks again, Terry and uh, Diane and uh, Wayne, for coming down to uh, talk to us tonight. Um, first of all, Terry, you, you're sort of like the, the town historian, as they say. You've, you've written a book on, uh, on Newmarket, which I understand is a, like a very good seller, particularly in Newmarket. <laughs> yes, fortunately, it has been a good seller, John. It came out a year ago last November, and there's uh, only a couple of hundred uh, copies left in the warehouse, uh, and uh, I don't know whether there'll be a second edition or not. Maybe you could do a th third printing, you never know. Maybe we could. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and you, you live uh, just sort of on the cusp of the downtown area. You can walk down I have about three blocks, three and a half blocks from, from Main Street, so it's, uh, it's a part of the town that was, was built right after the Second World War. And Diane, you have a business here. Uh, Newmarket, as I understand, started out years ago as a fur trading community, you know, the, uh, under the old elm tree and this type of thing, and uh, you're still carrying on the tradition. You have a fur I shop know. on the Main Street. Yes, I FL do. FL Furs? That's right. How long have you been on, on the Main Street now, Diane? We've been 15 years, John, and uh, it, it's, it's great. The, the north end of Main Street, certainly from the Baptist Church to Davis Drive, is a unique Main Street district because it combines residential, uh, including single-dwelling homes, and uh, a condominium townhouse area, as well as a commercial and right. residential above the commercial and green space. So it's a it's a difficult street to to really create cohesion, but it's it's an interesting street because as everything adapts to its environment, most of the businesses down there are businesses that are uh, drive to businesses, <clears throat> not businesses that depend on walking traffic. And so you live there too, don't you? Yes, I do, you? John. Yes. What's it like to live right on? Uh, it's great. Main it's very exciting. There's a lot happening. Uh, certainly, Main Street is is uh, reviving itself. It yes. goes around, comes around, and uh, the people down there are very unique as well. They're they're very. It's very much an old village. Uh, uh, Wayne, uh, you were with us before when we did the show in in uh, September, and uh, the the part that does uh, goes from the top of the hill for those of the viewers who maybe think of it as a Baptist church up there, and you can stand and look down. Is that really part of the old sort of Indian trail that they talk about that you, you hear so much about in, in Terry's book? Uh, so they say. <laughs> I mean, uh, unfortunately, none of us were around then, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's come down through, uh, through legend that the Indians did use that route uh, to bypass part of the Holland River that they couldn't come through. Because when you, uh, when you go from uh, Davis Drive, uh, and you go south of Main Street, you actually go up a hill, right? And when you get to Sauce, you can look down towards Eagle Street, and if you're coming the other way, you can look down. So this, this kind of vantage point, uh, and I don't know if it separates the street so much, but there's a, there's a distinct old uh, feeling about it, as you say, a warmth feeling and so on. And there's some older buildings down there. I remember uh, there's one right across the street from you, Diane, um, the Great Oat. Uh, Terry, could you tell us a little bit about that building? Uh, it, is there a plaque on that, do you know? I uh, no, I don't believe there is a plaque on it, but the building is interesting in that it was built uh, during Confederation, 1867. And uh, when you look very closely at it, it, it's got some very nice features to it. It's got projecting eaves with very heavy brackets supporting those eaves. Um, and, and it was built by the same builder who built the Christian Baptist Church, Jacob Johnson. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, I noticed uh, I was in the building, and there's a, another place next to it. We're going to have an interview with uh, the woman who owns the Calico Goose, which is another house. But they're sort of up on the side of a hill. Was, the, was that dug into, or has it been uh, landscaped or uh, re reduced by the town? Or has that always been sort of a very sharp... Incline. In any of the old photographs that we've got of the area, you can see it's a very prominent hill, and and they tended to follow the topography, the landscape, and alter it as little as possible. So no, that hill has been there. And your building, uh, Diane, the one you're in, is that a uh, an old uh, century uh, building or or it was something? It's actually 1926. Uh huh. Uh, apparently. Um, it has changed different, it's been different businesses over the years, but I believe it was a dairy. 
originally. A dairy? I believe so, yes. It's an interesting place. I think that it, um, it certainly isn't grand, like the, where the gray goat is or the calico moose. So it definitely is not. But it, it's, it's a lovely house. It feels very warm and very, very inviting. And Terry, the, um, the uh, Chamber of Commerce has a, an office in uh, one of the buildings there, the homes. I, I, I can't break, think of the business that's in there. That's an antique store. It's an antique store <coughs> upstairs and the Chamber of Commerce downstairs. And the, that home is plaqued. It is. Uh, it was owned by a man named Blizzard who built it in 1911, I think. Uh, Wayne may correct me on that. Uh, and he was a farm implement dealer. And right next to that is the Grey Goat. And I noticed we have a clip now, I think. Uh, if that's queued up, we'll show a little clip of the, uh, the Grey Goat we talked to the owner, Bo. So if you're, if you're ready with that clip, we can watch that now. Hey, here we are at the uh, Grey Goat on Main Street in uh, Newmarket, and we're talking with the owner, Bo. Not uh, Bo uh, Mister or uh, Bo what, just Bo. And Bo, you're the owner, and uh, welcome to Community Report. Thank you very much. Uh, Bo, I know you've been the owner here since uh, August of 1995. This will be coming up to your first year. Could you tell us a little bit about the building itself, the house? It's an old home, I understand. It was originally an old family estate, as you can see here on the wall, uh, built in 1861 uh, by the Harrisons. Uh, over the years, it uh, was a family residence. It, from that, became a funeral parlor at one, one time, or a funeral home. And approximately 14 years ago, it became a pub. So the building itself, the old home, has got a lot of uh, history to, to it as well. So they tell me. <laughs> now, I understand from our uh, new market historian, uh, Terry Carter, that uh, the building has, uh, at one time, or as they say, it has ghosts. Is that true? Well, I've heard from a lot of my staff and uh, prior owners that there are ghosts here, but I think it's like most old buildings, things just creak with temp temperature and humidity changes. You mean, you mean nobody has seen an apparition? Um... I haven't, but uh, I don't know, maybe I haven't had as much as somebody else to drink. <laughs> maybe they have. <laughs> so if, uh, if it's 1.30 or 2 o'clock, well, 2.30 now in the morning, then you might see an apparition of the back there. <laughs> That's possible. Uh, but the, the, the heaven, there is an upstairs here, too. It is as well. That's where you have a little dining room, and uh, I understand that's where the ghosts are. We'll take a shot of that later. But can you tell us a little bit about the, the building itself? Or are we sitting in uh, this, the, the bar here? Is the, is the parlor or front room? I would imagine uh, in the whole bar area here, at one time, one was the front room, parlor, and then bedrooms and a kitchen pantry off, off to the side. And, and you, uh, there's meals served here as well. Uh, and are you cooking in the same old kitchen that was in the same kitchen area that was here before? No, um, the kitchen was built on after the fact. Um, the existing room here, as you can see, like I say, is the old house. Anything beyond the wall over there was built on afterwards. Uh, you mean before you arrived as, as, a, as a restaurant and a pub? That's, that's right. Now, the, uh, uh, you've been in the business before. You were, you've been managing this before you took it over, I understand, in 1995. So how long have you been associated with the actual building itself? Uh, Larry from Fitzgerald's uh, bought the, the building and the business, uh, I would say, eight, nine years ago in September, eight or nine years ago. And I came in as a manager about four years ago. Sorry, sp spent about 30 years in the restaurant business. <laughs> well, are you from Newmarket yourself, uh, Bo? No, originally I'm from Oshawa, Ontario. I uh, lived most of my life in Toronto. Now and how long have you been in Newmarket now? Uh, 11 years this year. So uh, the old Main Street, I mean, it's still got a lot of history to it. Uh, we're sitting across from some fairly uh, older buildings as well, which we're going to be talking to uh, some other people uh, later on. But uh, you used to get a lot of people strolling along the Main Street to take a look at some of the buildings itself? On a Saturday and Sunday especially, you'll see all kinds of people out on Main Street, especially in the summertime. And, and you've got a very active uh, patio area as well, I know, that people, I have to come down myself, and it's out of there is very nice, a cool night evening to, uh, on a uh, summer evening to sit out there. And I know it's very, very active along that area. It's probably the best patio in town. It's uh, high above the street. Uh, you can shout at the neighbors, wave to people going by, people driving by, tooting, people wave. It's uh, a couple of different levels on it, great big trees over, over top. 
It's a great patio. Well, it's a, it's nice, it certainly is a place to visit uh, as, a, as an old home and to come down and have a have a drink or a drop in, have a sandwich or a coffee and uh, just visit with you. And you're here from time to time to say hello. I spend most of my life here. <laughs> well, thanks very much, Bo, for speaking with us. And uh, we'll go upstairs now and take a, a little shot of the... Uh, uh, of the upper uh, chamber where we might we might see an apparition, but it's a little early, I think. Well, if we turn the lights out, you might see one. <laughs> Thanks very much, Paul. Well, there you have it. That's uh, the gray goat, uh, Bo, the own, owner and uh, publican down there. But uh, Terry, uh, now you're here live in, 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 in the flesh. We didn't see a ghost there, but I uh, understand you, you say that people have some before it was a pub. <laughs> uh, not just before it was a pub, John. I, some years ago when I was in the newspaper business, I was collecting ghost stories from around town. And I uh, got information from a couple of people who worked there then, and this would have been about four or five years ago, who swore they ha had experienced uh, uh, spirits <laughs> of, I mean, of the non-alcoholic variety right. uh, in, the, in the basement, and uh, had, had very strange things happen on that top floor of the, of the, uh, of the building, the lights going on and off, and, and had actually seen apparitions on the stairway and in the window and uh, from the parking lot after the place had been all locked up and the lights turned off, uh, the lights had been turned back on again and things like that they claimed had happened. These were, uh, were, were uh, staff of the place who weren't supposed to be uh, <laughs> imbibing along with the patrons, so uh, you can take that for And this for, is for what recently as well? This, this was in the last five years. These stories were repeated to me. Really? I, I wonder, I, I, have you seen anything? You, you have a, a store and a this is directly across the street. Uh, I don't know if you have it. Well, I haven't right. seen anything over at, at the Great Gulf, but I, I certainly have heard those stories as well. And uh, apparently, actually, it may have been exercised. Something ah. rings a bell in my head. I think that, I think that some people did, in fact, perform an exorcism several years ago at the the Great Gulf. Um, there is supposed to be a resident ghost in my place as well, residing in the in the. Uh, the upper, the upper story, one of the front rooms. Really? Really. And have you seen this? Well, I actually I haven't seen it, John. But I did see it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I felt a presence one night when I was alone, and I had not been across the street of the gray goat. But it, it was a very, very scary feeling. Not one of these things that uh, the mar uh, walks the parapets at midnight with the with the, with the, the head under the, the, under the yeah, arm. and the robes flowing. No, right, nothing quite problematic. No. I think that's a, Wayne, have you heard the, about this? Uh, these ghost stories of downtown Newmarket? No, uh, I'm afraid not. I, I tend to be into the solid <laughs> building type thing, uh, and, and not the not the, the phantom ghost. Although, I kept waiting for Robert Simpson, Simpson to come back to my house to tell me what. Uh, some of the things that in my house originally looked like, but uh, I gave up waiting and, and restored them. <laughs> but uh, uh, Bo was talking about the building itself, which is, uh, he said, was built in 1861 or, or thereabouts. Uh, can you tell us, uh, being in the, uh, the LACAC committee, that has a plaque on that building, I think, doesn't it? Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure if it has one there, but uh, definitely it's, it's on our inventory. It's, one of the important buildings in, in the community. And as he indicated, there is a photograph in there of what it used to look like. Uh, and interestingly, it didn't have a veranda on it when it was originally built. It, it just the front door opened onto a stoop. And, and the veranda that you see there now is a later addition. And the, the building itself is it a, uh, uh, something has that uh, type of Victorian uh, gingerbread in some places. Has that been put on later or? by the new owner, or was that originally? I noticed you could just see something like that in the picture, which is on the wall in the... Uh... No, that, that, that would have been there when it was built. I mean, that was very much the character of the building at that time. And in fact, the builder who built it built a number of houses around there, and you can see similar sorts of features in those houses as you can see in the Grey Goat. 
And the building next door, Terry, the one that you had, that the chamber has an office in with the antique business, um, is that an older building as well? The date on it, I think, is 1911, so it would be much, uh, constructed much later than the, than the Great Goat and its neighbor. Uh, were, well, one, it's much plainer. One of the interesting features of the building that Terry's in is that it's a concrete block building. I and noticed that, yeah. We don't look very favorably upon no. that now, but when it was built, that was uh, in vogue. That was the first concrete block building in town, and it was very highly regarded because it looked like cut stone. And oh, it really? Was, yes, it was a cheap way of, of doing a cut stone building. So it was very, very fashionable at that time. Was it always a, uh, a business, or was it a home as well? I, I believe it was a home. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think Thomas Wizard operated his business elsewhere and not directly out of the home. This isn't the fellow that owned the, foot, the, the, the soccer team in Toronto. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <Different> blizzard. <laughs> But uh, for the people who are viewing, and some of them who may not uh, been down that way or may not be able to know where the where this building is, you know, the Grey Goat and so on on Main Street, it's at the corner or just at the corner of I think it is it Queen. That's right. Qu Queen Street, and uh, beyond Queen Street, if you go well, which runs right uh, east and west, Queen Street mm -hmm. and North, uh, Main Street running north and south, there's another structure there. If you could tell us about it, I've seen this thing. As you go over the Queen Street Bridge, you can look to the to the north, and you see this strange-looking cement. Uh, it looks like a, a, a pot of a, some kind of an obelisk or something sitting in the middle of the field. What is that, Terry? For, for our viewers, I, I mean, always wondered. The, the, the arch, the yeah, the arch, arch yeah, over the river. It, it it is a concrete arch, and it at one time. Why is it sitting so in the middle of nowhere? Well, it looks like to me. When the radial railway line came through Newmarket. It came on a right away from Raglan Street down to Queen and then uh, then east on Queen. And at that point, it had to go across the river and down to uh, down the level to, to Davis Drive. And it went it made the, that transition on a, on a big wooden trestle. And that concrete arch held the trestle up where it went over the river itself. But why is it uh, still there? I mean, is it something it's unique? so well built. It, <laughs> <laughs> who's going to get rid of it? <laughs> <laughs> and now it's been designated because, from an engineering point of view, apparently it is unique. It was one of the first of its kind in, in uh, I guess, in Canada. And when there was talk of taking it down because the Conservation Authority said it impeded the flow of the river at, at high tide, uh, the Engineering Society of Ontario protested and they said, no, it was, it was worth saving. And so it was designated and has been saved. Is that right, uh, Wayne? The, 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 this, uh, Terry says it was the, but it, being designated as a... Uh, Yes, uh, well, there, there's a provincial plaque out there that describes the arch and its significance as an engineering feature. And just recently, the town agreed to designate it under the Ontario Heritage Act. So, yes, it is a, a designated feature. Well, just as you go east on, on Queen Street, before you get to the bridge, and you can see this arch, uh, there's, there are some, on the north side, there are some older homes, like I think, um, like semi detached homes. Are they, but they look like something was built maybe uh, 100 years or close to 100 years ago. Do you know those homes at all? Are you familiar with them? We've done a bit of research on them, and I think one of the interesting features about Main Street is that you can get a wide variety of, of houses from different time periods, and there are some there from, from the 1860s, as are the houses that you mentioned. Uh, and there is also a house in that line there that is roughly turn of the century. So you can get them spanning 50, 60 years as the community builds up and fills in. Can you see this arch from where you are at the back of your building, if you're not looking at the ghost, Diane? <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch the ghost. Uh, no, actually, you have to be walking down Queen Street and going over the bridge just, um, just east of, of Main Street on Queen Street. And when you walk over the bridge, you just cross the bridge and you look down. And, and interestingly enough, it's one of the last remaining parabolic arches in Ontario. A One parabolic arch. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also a couple of other interesting buildings there. There's the old, um, uh, the top of the hill, the registry building, which is kind of set back a wee bit. You can't really see it too well. Uh, there's a lot of trees around it now. The, there's a picture of it there. And uh, uh, directly across the street from that is the old um, uh, church, the, uh, the Baptist church. 
But the registry building, uh, Wayne, when was that? Uh, the plaque at the top of it, I think it's built, uh, I can't even recall. Well, <coughs> it, it was built in 1884, and at the top of the building, you'll see that it says North York Registry Office. It was for the writing of North York, and it was for registering deeds, mortgages, uh, marriage licenses, and birth and death certificates. So it was built as a fireproof building. It's a number of courses brick thick. It's got iron cast uh, window frames. It originally had an iron front door, uh, and it had slate roof. So at the time that it was built, it was as fireproof as you could get. Now, I uh, spoke with one time uh, uh, Mayor John Cole, and uh, he was talking about this uh, registry building. We were discussing that. And I mentioned, uh, I think I could maybe talk to you about it, in uh, Port Hope, Ontario, or in other towns as well, the old registry buildings, which are still there because they were built so solidly, have been uh, turned into archival buildings for the town archives and so on. And he, he was thinking that maybe they might be able to do that. But I understand the museum, which is now in, um, where is it, the, old, the oh, office specialty building, may be locating uh, to uh, the registry building. Do you, do you know anything about that, Diane? <laughs> Certainly, at the moment, I'm just going to bend up a little bit. The, the uh, registry building itself was built in three stages. Right. The, the second stage was built in, was it 1934, Wayne? And the, the third and final stage in 1954, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the, the first section, of course, being, you know, the, the designated uh, portion of the registry office. Uh, certainly, we are hopefully looking forward to the museum locating in this building by probably mid-October. Oh, really? Uh, we really do have a fair amount of work to to uh, put the the old building in shape to to hold to house the artifacts that we have without damaging them. So you have uh, humidity control. You have a, a great number of things that actually have to be addressed. I believe that the roof has to be repaired and and all sorts of things have to be done to it. And it's a fairly costly venture at the moment. Um, architects are looking into it. Um, um, LACAC is, is on track, uh, being certainly consulted as to what has to be done. Uh, it, it will be a wonderful, wonderful building. And essentially, it will be an archival building, too. The uh, Terry, certainly. being an old Newmarket, Terry, where you grew up in, in town, uh, was that building still in use as a registry office when, when you were, were here? Oh yes, it was. It? it was used uh, until the courthouse and registry office on Eagle Street uh, were constructed in the, was constructed in the 1970s. Really? It was in use. And then after the registry office moved out, the um, regional government moved welfare offices in. Oh, there's the other building we were looking at, which is the, uh, the church across the street, the Baptist Church. Now, what we're looking at right now, what is that, Wayne? Those, I noticed those little round things at the top of the... Well, again, Terry can correct me, but I think that was intended to be uh, an, an opening for a clock that was to be put in on, on Main Street, but it never did get put in. But it is interesting because you can climb up in that tower, open one of those uh, windows up, and get some great views of, of Main Street. And we have a number of photographs taken in the 1870s and 1880s of Main Street, aerial views from that tower. So when was that building built, Terry? Do you know? Uh, 1883, I believe, wasn't it? Uh, a bit older than that, in 1874. 74. The, yeah. the, the, those were clock openings, and town council, or it was the town council, and, uh, had uh, promised the, uh, the church to supply the clocks on all four walls. And after the tower got up, the council looked at the cost involved and reneged on that promise. <laughs> Uh, and, and never to this day have they made good. It might be something Diane would care to take up. <laughs> so the, the, the whole uh, for the... For well, the, the minutes of that was, meeting still be around. Yeah. Oh, yes, oh, yes. 122 years We're simply filled in, and, and it's, they're still, they still wait uh, town council promise. So. <laughs> but that's a unique building, the way it's... Uh, I know you see churches with steeples, but this seems to be somewhat different, uh, Wayne. Uh, well, it, it was taking advantage of the hilltop location. It, it's Gothic in style, so uh, a, a Gothic church reaches up towards the heavens, so that's a very tall church with a very, very prominent steeple that you can see from many parts of the town. And, and behind that, I think, there's an old home which may have been the manse, uh, of, which is part of the church, and, and someone said there was a, a burial ground at one time there. Behind the, uh, I don't know. No? 
That, that church was designed by a very interesting man, John T. Stokes, who was untrained as formally as an architect, but designed that church, and he designed St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church at the bottom of the hill, and he designed uh, the Mulock House and the old York Manor and quite a number of other buildings of that period uh, in town. Really? We have another clip we're going to show, and that's uh, uh, Diane Brown, her and husband Ray own the uh, Calico Goose, which is just next, it's a, it's a business right next to the, um, the Grey Goat. So if you could show that clip now, then we'll get a chance to listen to uh, what Diane and talks about the building. You will find it interesting. The Calico Goose, 70 Main <coughs> Street South. And it's owned by Ray and Diane Brown. And we're talking to the owner, Ray, or actually Diane Brown, in a beautiful old uh, century home that was built in 1894 by William Bunny, who was a... Um, An architect. And, and how long have you lived here, Diane? Uh, nine to ten years. And if you, you live upstairs, yes, and you also uh, run the business downstairs. Yes. What type of business is it? Can you tell the, uh, the viewers? We have a gift shop in the front part of the store, and the back, and these two middle rooms are a teaching studio. A gift shop, but I notice most of the things that you have here are sort of like... Uh, uh, arts, things that are uh, handmade, they're not archi uh, antiques, are they? What you're seeing in this room are all the pieces that we teach in the classes. We've painted these pieces. And these are uh, students who, uh, they're for sale, are they? Actually, no, they're not, and these are all my pieces. <laughs> <laughs> but in the front you have a... Uh, the front is a regular gift shop, and we try to carry unique items. Um, oh, we have everything, country, uh, pottery, well, I noticed uh, this beautiful window here. It looks like it would be the part of parlor. Is that right? I think that was the front parlor. And from what I've been given to understand from people who've come into the shop, that window is a painting of a castle in Scotland. It, on an island uh, just off Scotland. And uh, it's stained glass. Is it, was that here when you moved in? Yes. Yes. Do you think the architect, uh, Bunny, uh, put that in, or was it someone else? I would presume he put it in. Uh, the original house, actually, from what we can determine, went to about halfway back here. And it appears that there was an addition put on. The kitchen that's in the back and part of this room uh, was an addition. And how many rooms are there in the, the house? Oh, gosh. Um, well, in the original house, we've taken out a few walls upstairs. There would have been uh, one, two, three, probably four bedrooms, five bedrooms upstairs. It's really difficult to determine because when you go into the, what we call the dining room, for instance, there's a stairwell and it's a closet. Now we presume that that was over here, was the original uh, stairs to the basement and um, it, it's hard to decide. I, I know there's... I know this is on a, a, a very steep incline on a hill. Was, was the main street always down uh, or was it up and been cut in? Or uh, There's a long driveway up too and you have there's quite a, a space at the driveway. back. Yeah, we have a very nice parking lot in the back, 17 spaces. Uh, and the parking, I, I might just mention the driveway is not a hazard. We take very good care of that driveway in the winter time so it's quite safe. I would suggest probably the incline has been here for a while. Um, and the only difference from the outside, the stairway was on the angle, not the front, on the original, in the original setup. Do you have photographs of what it looked like originally? It was a photograph, and I think that's uh, how we found that out. This was owned by Mr. Bunny, and then I believe the um, Trinity, I believe the church, uh, and it would have been Methodist then, uh, took this building over. A number of people have told me they were married in the front parlor. Oh, really? And I noticed that the, that the room for the sliding doors oh, is still... beautiful pocket doors. They're beautiful. They're covered by furniture right now, but they're the original. And I believe what you see down here around the windows is original. All of the, uh, the, uh, uh, the covering... All the woodwork. It's all original. It's, it's, it's so well done. And the ceiling as well. Now, the ceilings, I again would think, have been redone. I can't imagine that they would be in this kind of shape if they hadn't been. They might have been done as the original. Mm -hmm. We have a tin ceiling. 
in the uh, one of the painting rooms, an original tin ceiling. And I noticed that the it's the uh, the hardwood floors makes it make the place so warm. It really yeah. does. Yeah, it's it's a lovely building. Um, when we first walked in it, I I just felt that it had been a happy building, a very pleasant. If people ever married in the front room, that it would have been... Well, and I've had customers tell me that it has a good feeling um, if you're into that kind of thing, you know, ghosts and everything. I don't know. But... Um, we were just next door at the Grey Goat. Do they have ghosts in... you have ghosts in here? Well, I'm not sure. I've lived here now, so I'm not sure we have ghosts. Now, my girls that work here, they insist we have ghosts. <laughs> but I don't know. Well, on... on yeah. <laughs> On that note, Bill, uh, well, thanks very much for You're Diane welcome. for taking the time to speak to us. You're welcome. And if people want to find out what the Calico Goose is, it's on 70 Main Street South. That's right. And then the heart of Old New Market. Yes. Thanks very much. You're very welcome. Well, that's an interesting uh, uh, interview, uh, Wayne. Uh, but uh, as you were mentioning while we were listening to that, the uh, it was a, a manse, and as she said, uh, part of the. Uh, a, she thinks, seems to think the Methodist Church at the time before it became part of the United Church. That, that's correct. And I think one of the interesting features about that house is because it was done by an architect who was connected with the uh, Kane Woodenware factory, there is a lot of beautiful wooden features to that house, including the veranda and, and the surrounds around the doors and the windows that you saw when you were inside it. Well, the thing that really strikes you when you go in is the this uh, stained glass window was, was the, as you saw in the clip in that picture of uh, an old Scottish uh, castle and uh, as she says it's original or she seems to think it's original uh, I, I don't doubt that it is it certainly fits in with the, the window yeah. and those pocket doors unbelievable they're, they're still working um, and she has uh, some of them where there was some things tied in front of them but you move away there they are still there and this tin type of uh, uh, ceiling in the kitchen. Uh, well, we, we, we believe it's the kitchen area. Why would someone, is, is that a feature of the old homes having it tin like that or? Well, in, in the period when that house was built, it was something that you could buy and it was felt that uh, it would prevent fires from spreading. And of course, with a kitchen and a wood stove and all that, you, you had the chance of fire there. So tin ceilings were used there. And on, on many of the store ceilings uh, further down Main Street as you get, you get toward Water Street. And here we have again a uh, place right next to the Grey Goat, Terry, and she's talking about ghosts. She hasn't seen them, but the people who work there do. Maybe they go to the Grey Goat from time to time. Seems to be a haunted Main Street, isn't it? <laughs> a haunted Main Street, yeah. Well, there's the, um, the, the um, this is the Calico Goose, which is a, uh, what type of a shop is it, uh, Diane? Uh, it, it's a gift. Craft? It's a it's a gift shop. But Diane Brown uh, is a very well known teacher in folk art, and uh, all of her classes are filled. You have to book months ahead to get in with her. Um, very talented artist in her own right. What's folk art? What is it? That's uh, those wonderful <laughs> <laughs> old folksy pictures that you. Have. But, uh, what is folk art? How would you define folk art? Well, it, it, it was the common type of art that was done, uh, you know, particularly around the turn of the century or earlier. So it, it, it's it's the very common, as as, as opposed to uh, something that you would go to a university to learn. Now these these uh, buildings we're talking about are between Queen <coughs> and I think Ontario Street, which is where yes. the uh, the Catholic Church is. But uh, are there other businesses in that area there, Diane? But you, you have the fur shop, which is right in that same block, isn't it? You're I have the fur store across the street, which is kind of unique as well. It's one of the very, I guess it's the only one in York Region. Uh, and we do, we're mostly a service business now with repairs, remodel, storage, cleaning, that sort of thing. Uh, across the street from us is the Newmarket Century House Antique, which is in itself extremely unique. This is where uh, the Chamber of Commerce is as well. Uh, people from from China, Japan, order um, gas lamps from the the Century House Antique Shop. It has one of the the most extensive collections of gas lamps. Is that and, right? Yeah, and uh, from the U.S. as well, they're ordered. So it they uh, they install, they repair, uh, they replace parts. But uh, a very unique business in in and of itself. And there's another new business moved in down there. Um, uh, locksmith, I think, or yes. key shop, yes. and he's in an old yellow uh, 
building, well, it was, uh, I, I was told it was a convent or something at one time, or part the of the... Sykes the, the, House, the old Sykes, Sykes House. House yeah. yeah. Actually, that was the manse for the uh, for St. John's uh, Church, the, the, last, the last owners. But that building uh, was lived in for a number of years, but this person's moved in, I don't know how long ago, which was in the, what? It's in the last year. And uh, it's just the, the, the transformation of the building is mm -hmm. marvelous. All of a sudden, the brick is there. I think we have a shot of it if uh, we get it up uh, soon. But you can see the yellow, yellow brick. I don't know whether it was all dirty before and cleaned, or it's is it painted it, before? Was they, it they painted? Took all the paint off. This, you, uh, the spring. You must ask Wayne to. to well, there's talk a picture of it. There, there it is, Wayne. Yeah, you see that? It's amazing what he's done. This uh, person. In, and I think he lives in it too, does he, Diane? Yes, he does. And they really are doing wonderful things. They're a very energetic young couple with a young family. They're marvelous people. But you must ask Wayne to tell you about the bricks because there's an uneven coloring in the bricks, and this man will tell you why. I, I, if you look at that building again, you'll see on the, on the corners of it there are very prominent yellow bricks on it. Uh, but in behind that, there, there's uh, pinky to, to red brick. And the Victorians probably would have painted that, that mottled brick part, but left the very pure yellow brick unpainted. So uh, there's some things that Victorians did that, that we find hard to believe that they do it, but they did paint bricks originally when they were put up. So where, where would that brick come from? Would that be local? That would have been local brick, yes. You know, there was a brickyard in Newmarket, and that definitely was local. And, and the house was built, again, by Jacob Johnson, the same builder who built the Grey Goat and uh -huh. the Baptist Church. How old was that? Uh, how when would that been built? The Sykes House was built in 1866, so just a year before the Grey Goat, and it's noteworthy because it's got large panes of glass in the, in the house, two panes over two panes, and it was the first building in town with the large panes of glass. It was so noteworthy it made the local newspaper the fact that it had these large, large panes, panes of, of glass. glass. <laughs> and that, that's an important feature when we're dating buildings because as the buildings get more modern, the panes of glass get larger and larger. And up the street from there, uh, past the other, just down from the Baptist Church, is another building, a, a red type of uh, uh, house. I think that the uh, Robertson House, which has been there some time. It's, uh, we, there, there's a shot of it there now. That's the, now, can you tell us about that building, Terry? Would you know much about this uh, place? I think Wayne probably knows the history better than I do, but it started life as a, as a, a smaller structure and faced the other way. It was owned by uh, a man named Marsden, who, uh, who was a miller in town, and it, it faced the other way. It, it faced east because it looked out over his mill pond, which, which was in the valley, now the river valley, to, to the east of, the, of Main Street. And he turned it around? Well, later owners uh, turned, <laughs> turned it around so that the front door was, was on the Main Street side of the, of the building, and they expanded it, I think, by adding the wings. Now, this building is on, on the Main Street on the same side as the Baptist Church as you go north on Main Street, but it has a Main Street address, but it's, it's set back so far. Why, why is it so... Originally, it was on a very large lot all, all to itself. And, uh, after Marsden owned the building for a couple of years, it was bought by T.J. Robertson, who was uh, the solicitor for the town and, and, and a lawyer. And he expanded it, as Terry indicated, over the years. One of the interesting features of that house is the veranda on it. Again, if you look closely, it, it's a crenellated, flat-roofed crenellated veranda. So it looks like it's got little battlements on it, like a castle. And it's the last house in town with that type of veranda. It was quite common, but as I say, that's the last one left. So what is in there now? Do you know, Diane? Uh, is it, Actually, is it a store? I believe that's rental now. It's, is it? it's part of the, the condominium unit that was built uh, on that property. And you mentioned that the building where the locksmith shop is now, where the two young couple are looking in, and he's done such marvelous job, one that's young. called, like they call it, the Sykes House. But just next to this building here, the Robertson House, on the same side of the street, there's a, a real nice-looking... Uh, commercial building, which has all been painted and looks uh, something like 18, something from the Wild West, and, and yeah. Sykes is in this. Is that the same type of people? or that's a, I think it's an accountant. Uh, or George Smith. Yeah, yeah. That, that place, um, wonderful building, was refurbished about five years ago right. under the direction of uh, uh, architect Robin Morrison. He did a 
very terrific job. Yeah. That house dates from roughly the turn of the century. It's not one we've done a lot of research on, but it, it's more recent than the Robertson House. And there's a commercial building, I think, uh, or offices in, in there now mm -hmm. as well, but it really looks yeah. nice. But it complements this driveway up to that, uh, that Robertson. I understand at one time there was a big grove of what, uh, oak trees or something there. Was there Terry at one time? Yes, there was. Yeah. And there have been some controversy about the oak trees <laughs> that are no longer there. The, the other uh, interesting thing in that same area is there's a Loosby Memorial um, Company, and uh, they have a building there which looks just like the false front from the Old West. It's uh, one of the oldest buildings around. There's a fellow named uh, Dave Tompkinson who owns that. We have a clip of that coming up, I think, but before we get at that, uh, that's another business right in the corner of um, Queen Street and Main Street. Um, Wayne, if you could maybe just give us a background about that building and the fact that it's a monument shop. Mark, the monument shop, I believe, has been operating there since 1883 when the building was built. So it was built as a monument shop, uh, originally Cassidy and Allen and then, then Lusby. But it, it's got a boomtown front to it. it the, the second story on it almost looks false. Uh, yeah, I noticed that. Uh, yeah, yeah, so something you find in, in, out of the Wild West. The other interesting thing about that building is that it's clad in, in, in pressed metal that looks like cut stone or, or concrete block. So eventually, uh, originally it was uh, plastered or rough cast, and then this uh, pressed metal was added to it. So very interesting building. I think we have a clip uh, uh, where we talked with Dave of the recent... Uh, current owners, so if you've got that clip queued up in the van, we can uh, take a look at that now. That's uh, Dave Tompkinson and the uh, Loosby. Uh, GW Loosby uh, Memorial Company right. Limited, and we're here talking with the owner, da Dave uh, Tompkinson. Uh, Dave, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, the building itself? Is, it, is this the oldest building in Newmarket? Or what oh, no, it's not the oldest building. Uh, it's the uh, certainly the uh, oldest monument shop in town. Uh, originally, uh, this is in the new part that you're in now. Uh, it was built in 1883, and the workshop, which is just behind the doors, uh, that was originally built in 1865. But you said it was the oldest commercial uh, building business. business in Newmarket in its original location. Uh, Roadhouse and Rose is actually a little bit older. And I noticed from the front of the building, it does look like uh, something from you know a building the old from 18. Rooms down Tile, uh, style, yeah, that's yeah, that's quite a landmark. And how long have you uh, been here yourself, Dave? Uh, personally, our family's been here for 20 years. Uh, myself, uh, about 18. And uh, the Lusby uh, people uh, originally bought this uh, when it was sometime in the 18. Uh, G. W. Lusby, as we've kept the name on the front of the building, uh, more uh, for historical purposes, uh, came in in 1896 and uh, he apprenticed. Uh, he was 14 years old and he took over, uh, he became partners with Alan and when Alan passed away he took over full ownership in 1921 and then uh, after the war his son Jack came into the business and uh, old George Loosby uh, was, let's see, he passed away I believe in 1971, about 92, 93 years old. Oh really? Yeah. And I understand your parents were involved in the business after them, right? Uh, my parents purchased Loosby's in uh, 1975, yes, from Jack Loosby. Yeah. And so uh, they, they carried on the tradition, and uh, when they uh, retired, you... Uh, did you come in as an apprentice or something, oh, or whatever well, they called that? <laughs> apprentice from my father? Uh, well, I was trained, yes, in yeah. the way he wanted things done, which I guess that any apprentice, that's the way they're trained. Uh, we've added a few things since my parents left, uh, expanded a little bit, um, but when we took over from Loosby's, uh, we honored their reputation, uh, and we've expanded on it, and we take that very seriously. Now, I know there are two, uh, cemeteries in, in Newmarket, you mm -hmm. know, the Catholic one and the other Newmark mm -hmm. uh, cemetery, but do you, do you cover more than that? I'm sure you do. We've gone to uh, New Brunswick. Uh, I really? I just sold one last week for Nova Scotia. 
We've sent uh, four to Newfoundland. Uh, but you cover all of like East Willenbury and oh, yeah. Mount Albert yeah, you're and all those places. Boundaries. Well, yeah. Normally our, our boundaries were about 20 miles in a circle. Yeah, and that's pretty much where we like to stay. And it's always been a monument shop here, has it's it? It's always been a monument shop, yes. And in the back is where you uh, carve them and uh, did you still, I'm sure they don't do that with a uh, old chisel and things anymore. We but still do it all the way that it used to be done uh, with the hammer and chisel, uh, with pneumatic chisels, sandblast. Um, if I have a specialty lettering order to do, well, the old raised lead style, uh, I bring my father out of retirement. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, we did one of those about uh, three weeks ago. Now, I, I noticed I was in earlier uh, that the workshop there, there's, there's a lot of artists in there. I mean, it's a real art. This, uh, you couldn't artist. think of yes, it. Yes, he uh, is. I can't draw worth the darn. <laughs> I can chisel, uh, tool, uh, pitch, do anything like that, but I can't draw. Would Everybody's you, got their thing. Would you mind if we went in the back and take a look at some of those By people all working there? By okay, well, thanks very much, Dave, for being here. We appreciate taking the time to talk to us. Thank you very Thank much you. for coming in. All right. The uh, building, and you're right, I noticed that, what do you say, the pressed metal at the uh, at the front of the building when you see that? Again, it was, uh, it was an economical way to try and imitate something that was really expensive. So the Victorians did this... Uh, quite regularly. So they're, here they were trying to imitate cut stone. And, and, and I was talking to Dave uh, earlier before we got on camera, he mentioned the fact that they had gone sort of gone out of the way to make sure they leave this old uh, Wild West front because it's, it's kind of unique, isn't it? I mean, that's the false front idea. Right, right. And, and uh, Terry, you were asking uh, during the clip if someone's upstairs. He has a bill, uh, offices up there, but I don't know, had anyone ever lived up there before? I uh, doubt it, but I, I wouldn't know. What that have been used for? And it's been a monument shop for ever since the building was uh, was built. And mm -hmm. it's, the Loosbys had that for I don't know how 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 long did the Loosbys have that place? Well, he said Mr. Loosby started working there in 1891, I think, and took over some years later. And I know he what his his partner didn't live long after they you know, they, they assumed ownership. But the, the Loosby family had it for. 60 or 70 years, I guess. It's, it's really something in the back. There's a couple other buildings, too, on the, uh, where we have some clips on that are down the road from there uh, on past that, uh, that yellow brick. or uh, that's, There it is there. You can see it in Myers. Can you tell us a little bit about that, uh, Diane? Uh, if you know, uh, the Myers store has been there, Myers Variety, for a long time. I'm not sure exactly, John, how long uh, Myers Variety and Gift Store has been on Main Street. It's, it, has, it was originally started, I believe, by Mr. and Mrs. Myers Sr. Uh, when they passed away, uh, George, and, George Myers and uh, his sister Jenny took over the business, and Jenny is still there now. George passed away a, a year ago, I believe. Uh, it, it has to be a, a kid's dream. They're, Jenny is serving the children of the children that her parents served. The, the children, in the, uh, the candies, I mean, it's a dream place. If you go in there at Halloween, I think they have every mask going, you know. I remember <laughs> running in there and getting one on Mulrooney so at, at the height of his unpopularity. And it, 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 was, it was a real hit. It, it, it's a really, it's a marvelous place. It's a, a fantasy place for children. And, and Jenny, uh, Jenny works very hard and, and carries on the traditions of her, of her family, and it's, it's, it's really quite lovely. I didn't know that the family had owned that. Her, her parents yes, had owned it? her parents Because she's, it. I think she's English, and, and George, who died, was English, mm -hmm. uh, and her parents uh, had that before them. Yes. Mm -hmm. How long has it been a variety store, uh, Terry, would you yeah, know? I don't know. It was always been a variety well, store. In my memory, it's always been a variety <laughs> store. At a time when there wasn't a variety store on every, uh, every street uh, uh, with, a, with a car on it, uh, that was the variety store in town. But this place is just chock full, like you say. Oh, you go in there, it's got everything you can yeah, think of. Absolutely marvelous. Well, we figured, what, Terry, about 50, 60 years. And unfortunately, I, I don't know the exact time. I'm, I'm certain that if you go down and see them, Jenny will tell you how long it's been there. But um, a long time. I know. You, I, I shop in there from time to time, papers and magazines and things. And mm -hmm. it's tough to get out of there because when you mm -hmm. go in, she starts talking, and then whoever's in there starts talking to it, and, and you end up visiting. It's just a, a homey place. Yeah. Wonderful yeah. throwback, isn't it? It is. Yeah. 
something yeah. too uh, well like I remember back uh, when I was a, a kid growing up you know BB bats and used to get and, the yeah. <laughs> and yeah. ice cream and the, yeah and the jawbreakers and this type of mm. thing uh, there's Rocco's uh, the, the, the you know the Rocco the uh, the barber mm -hmm. down there who's been around for a, for a long time barber shop and then down at the end of the street there's the um, uh, Caldwell Bankers, the real estate people. I think Bob Armstrong uh, has that, but there's a building there uh, which has a plaque on the front. I see it called the Union Hotel, and I wonder if uh, Wayne could give us a little background. Well, there's the building there. You can see it at the corner of Davis Drive. It's right on Davis Drive and, um, and, and, and Main Street North. Uh, Wayne? Well, with the train station nearby, there were several hotels built there to take uh, advantage of, of people who were using the train or to offer the services to those people. So the Union Hotel was built in, in the early 1880s. Uh, a local architect by the name of John O. designed the building. So uh, it, it's been a prominent feature on that corner for, uh, for quite some time. And uh, right next to that, as you say, just a few a short uh, paces away is the old train station, which is still standing. Uh, there's a picture of the train station. I understand that the town uh, is looking at it and the chamber would like to move into this building and uh, take it over. I think it would be ideal. Uh, Terry, have you... Do you, do you know? Well, the town owns the, the station now and the Chamber of Commerce is negotiating with the town to to take it over and move the, its tourist information operation and its own offices and the chamber business offices and so on in there, uh, restore the building and, and return it to some of its glory and to a, a, a good use for the community. Then you'd have a place to park. But you'd have a place to park. <laughs> but that's still in the negotiation stage. Well, anyway, uh, we've got so many things to talk about and see down there, but come down and visit the old Main Street. Walk down from Eagle to Davis Drive, go up to the top of the hill and go down to the bottom. You'll see all these homes and the businesses there. I want to thank Wayne Morgan for taking the time to be here with us, and Diane Springsteen of a busy, busy schedule, and also Terry uh, for giving us a little homey background on, on the things in Newmarket. So I'd like to remind our viewers to tune in to uh, Community Report Thursday, June 27th at 9 p.m., when we'll be featuring uh, some uh, information about the amended legislation concerning these fire regulations for homes with additional units, which people refer to as basement apartments. So be sure to phone in, it'll be a call show, a call in show. We're gonna have somebody from the fire department there and somebody from the Ministry of Housing. So tune in to Community Report, June 27th, 9 p.m. live right here on cable, Community Cable 10 TV. Thank you very much for watching. I'm John Dowson and good night.